Sure, and of course, it's always a beautiful day to bring you nothing but the best in our world of entertainment. Well, today I get to hang out with a very beautiful young lady. She's been into music for some time now. She's doing amazing. She's doing so well. Well, I know there's been one or two things around her. She's spoken about them, but today we're going to talk more about her music, her record label, and everything about her. Talking of who it is, it is the beautiful Sefa. Sometimes the name I, is it Sefa or Sefa? It's Sefa. Sefa. Yes, Sefa. Uh, is, is it an Ewe name? Yes, it is. Okay, so Sefa. Yes, Sefa. I, I think the, this will probably be the second time I'm talking to you, yes. or third time. Yes, I think it's the third time. Third time. And I will always remember the first day I <laughs> came into Black Avenue office, I saw you, had that interview. Yeah. Probably one of the first people to have interviewed yes. you. Yes. Wow, thank God we've come far. <laughs> How are you doing anyway? I'm fine, thank you. I'm fine, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming to interview me. It's always an honor meeting you. Yeah. So pretty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you have a new branga. Yes. Talk about it. What yes. actually inspired that song? Well, um, there's a popular slang going about, um, I think, Ichoko, oh. I was like, ah, I'm a musician, I'm very creative, let me use it, let me use it in a song. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, the best person that fits on that song, because it's a danceable song, is yeah. Mr. Drew, and he's hot right now. So it's like, okay, Drew, please come by the studio, let's record. Mm -hmm. He came in. That was it. it was wow. Because I, I was I, I was just asking myself, and somebody has probably mentioned that the mm -hmm. video, it yeah. was a, a term he used, so I was like, okay. Yeah. I mean, I know Mr. Drew is hot. I know there are other hot artists out yeah. there, but you went particularly for Mr. Drew. Yes, I did because you know I've always wanted to try my hands on dancing. I've wanted to try something new, and in the industry right now, we all know it's Mr. Drew that is doing the whole dancing and stuff like that. So he pushed me to find another side of myself I didn't even know was there. So if you watch the choke video, I'm dancing all over the video. Yeah, like, I, I, I saw something like. like oh, it choke, oh, it choke. <laughs> Oh, but it was beautiful. <laughs> I, and so I love the Thank video you so as well. Much. You're doing amazing. It has not been easy for you. Mm -hmm. How long have you been with the BAM record label? Um, it's been close to four years now. Wow, I've four been, years. Yeah. Wow. How has the experience been like, mm -hmm. considering the fact that amongst some other musicians who were signed onto the record label, yeah. but they left eventually. You've mm -hmm. been the only person who has been on the record label. Mm -hmm. How was the experience like after they all left? Well, um, after they left, I was a bit sad that they left. So when they all left, it felt like, oh, my brothers and sisters are leaving, but still we are cool. And after they left, I mean, um, it's been work for me ever since, because you know, when it comes to BAM, everybody has their own managers, everybody has their own team. So it's, it's still working for me. I'm still working. I'm still doing what I'm supposed to do as an artist signed to a label. But when they left, I was, I was hit about it. Was it difficult for you? I mean, you know, sometimes you go somewhere and mm -hmm. even when the people leave, um, the sort of conversations you hear out there, yeah. what people say, mm -hmm. uh, were there things you probably heard? Uh, did you hear things that made you feel like, why would people even say this? Yes, I did. I heard a lot of things and it's absurd. And I don't know that I don't really not like I don't care but I don't I'm very nonchalant I don't care about what people say or what people, I'm just I know the aim and I know the goal so that's where I'm going and I've had a lot uh, as for plenty they have had plenty but I, I just really don't mind do you mind sharing oh I mean it, it's not really important <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give them hype so you know yeah, it's all about yeah. me today I'm yeah. honored to be here so it has to be about me <laughs> Well, I mean, since they all left, mm -hmm. how has your relationship been like with them? I know most of them were your mm -hmm. friends. Um, you yeah. had another colleague, Fid Fida Rhymes, yeah, as Fida well. Rhymes, uh, yeah. How has your relationship been like with them? The relationship has been amazing. Um, if they have songs that they are releasing, I still share it for them. We still, we still talk here and there. Um, I think it was last two weeks or last three weeks that I spoke to Frida. And they have birthday parties that I attend. They have parties that I attend. So the relationship is still the same. Some of them even still come to Oasis and we still jam the normal jam. Honestly, still jam. 
I don't know what I'm saying. It's been cool. It's been cool. Yeah. Hmm. Have you always wanted to be on a record label by yourself where, you know, this is the record label, Sephi is the only one on it, and the focus is on you? Mm -hmm. Because I'm asking this because yeah. I noticed that your career actually took off properly when mm -hmm. your colleagues left. Mm -hmm. So maybe the focus was on you alone. Have you always wanted it that as way? An, as an artist, there's always a dream to be the focus because, you know, it's it's... It's very difficult for you to get to some sort of level if you are a lot, because then every everybody is getting attention, everybody is demanding for something. But if you are the only artist, at least the the attention comes on you a little bit. So, I mean, me being the only artist there is exciting. It's it's it's, it's great to be to be to be the focus and mm -hmm. to be like my work being pushed ahead and stuff like that but i wouldn't have also minded if they were still on the label because it, it it feels like the same thing we are i'm still doing right now but they leaving i think it has really helped my career to a point to yeah. a point you get into trouble for this but don't worry i'm sorry like i, I think i'm just trying to be oh it's doreen it's doreen it's not me it's doreen <laughs> Uh, wow you know the first time i met you and had an interview with mm. you i remember you were so innocent yes you were so calm like you know when you're talking you're all you know you were different Nervous, yeah. yeah i would say that maybe you were a virgin in the industry yeah but somewhere along the line you took off mm -hmm. it's like you you had to switch into something else yeah. what changed what was that thing that got into you did you think or did people say that when you change it to something, maybe you project your career or something. But what changed at that point? No, I, I don't think so. I think that um, when I joined the industry, I was learning. I'm still learning. And right now, it has gotten to a point where it feels like um, at least I've gotten a little bit of an idea of what it's supposed to be. Because before, I remember the first time I spoke to you, I couldn't even look at you. I, was I like, remember. God, I can't even talk. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> shy. But then I mean, to you we've done this over and over again so i'm learning that i have to be able to interact i have to be able to engage the people watching and stuff like that so i think it's a growing process for me i'm still growing i'm still learning from some of you i'm still learning from artists that were there before me and i'm still trying to make people work trying, st sorry trying to make stuff work for me so mm -hmm. nothing has really changed i'm still the same innocent Sefa. Sefa. it's just that i'm i'm learning the, the job I'm, I'm beginning to know what it entails and stuff like mm. that. now there's this perception in our industry that mm -hmm. sex sells yes and so maybe you have to show a little bit of mm -hmm. flesh mm -hmm. so a lot of female musicians who are probably out there covered up or mm -hmm. yeah you but once a while you have to show yeah. the that contribute to the way maybe you speak because yes i've seen a lot of pictures of you on social media and sometimes i'm like <gasps> oh, <laughs> did that contribute to that um i am one person who believes in um, sexuality cells um, but to a point because you can never take when it comes to a woman you can never take the sexuality out of a woman even right now that you're sitting here right now you look really really sexual to me because you look very nice somebody can say be like doreen dear i love her legs you can never take it <laughs> out of, you can never take sexuality out of a woman and as for um we the women in the industry even though we are selling our voice we also have to sell our looks our personalities but to a certain point so i feel like i personally I didn't change. I uh, when I joined the industry, I, I used to be the the quiet person, as people knew. It's just that it's right now that I'm beginning to feel a lot more free, and then show who I am as a person when I'm at home. When I'm at home, yeah. I'm allowed to wear skirts, or I'm allowed to wear short skirts or shorts and stuff like that. So I think that's what people see, and then they're like, "No, she's changing." But no, I'm still the same You're person. The same nothing person. has changed about me. I'm still. If I see you around to you, <laughs> I'm still the same person. Nothing has really changed. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So should I say that probably there was that bit of that in you, you were like that, but maybe you hadn't gotten to know so much about the industry. So maybe you were actually watching it from afar to see what you can see, what you can do. And that is how come, like what we are seeing now, we are probably surprised about it. And I've, I've always been like this. I always have always been like this. And I also got to realize that my, the people that follow me, I, I hate calling you guys my fans because I call you family. The family that follows me, they they like that that part of me. That that 
I don't know how to say that mm, Sefa part of me. They mm. don't like the laid back. The laid back. Sefa, they like, yeah, the Sefa that is in our faces. The Sefa that is moving about, dancing, looking all doing. Hot. Yes, the Sefa that when she's coming, you know, okay, that is her coming. Because I remember when I released Sugar, like, People loved it. People loved everything about Sugar. Even though they loved me as a person, they loved Sugar. They loved everything about it. And then I released songs that all I had to do was just sing, just stand there, wear a long dress and sing. People loved it too, but I was like, yeah, you can yeah. sing. I mean, what's up? Then it choked. And then, okay, it's like, now I'm wearing stretch. I'm mm -hmm. wearing this. And they're like, yeah, this is that's what we are looking for. <laughs> so I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to trying to give them what they want but also stay true to myself so that i don't lose myself in the process mm. so it's just me living the showbiz life mm. but yeah mm. but in doing that looking at um, what you have seen and mm. what you have had to do to of course excite your fans and yeah. also the music industry fanatics and everything uh would you say that out of maybe that change a bit mm -hmm. of like looking different mm -hmm. from who you were mm -hmm. has it added any sort of a value to your life has it added anything to your music yeah. uh, i i, I want to know that yes it has it has in, in amazing ways because you know there are other um people outside that come on my page and look at you there are other endorsement and ambassadorial deals that come to your page and look at what you're doing you know, when they go to youtube and they see your videos and they come on your page they want to see who they saw in the videos they want to see some like more okay this is an amazing artist I is down you're looking like you don't even look like your videos you're looking <laughs> like down it's like what's happening mm -hmm. so it has really added a lot because now i think when i start, people actually because it's like oh don't know to me no 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 exactly but sometimes before then when i used to go to places they used to come and be like ah when out to San you look you like this you. yeah you look like you this look, person okay. you don't really look like what we see and stuff like that so i think it has really helped me and i'm still growing i'm still learning i don't know it might get to a points where i'll change my mind and then go back to wearing jalabia or go back to wearing <laughs> brukutu and stuff like that but i think for now i the way i'm looking right now i like it you like it yes, oh that's that's good to hear now um looking at you mm -hmm. we're all women in the industry yes, it's not easy for all of us mm -hmm. do you have men making sexual advances at you i've heard a lot of female musicians who say that when somebody wants to invest in their musical career mm -hmm. they either propose that to them and if they are not able to meet it maybe mm -hmm. the investors go and some of them might even go into it yeah. and later have issues with it. Have you such experiences since you got into the industry well since i got into the industry i've never had anybody tell me i want to sleep with you before i help you do something but i've had men come to me and like oh i like you and stuff like that and when it happens like that i'm always saying i mean it's the nature of men men are hunters when they see something they like, mm -hmm. it's, like it's up to you the woman to be like no i'm gonna allow it i'm not gonna allow it and i always say that it's not right for you to tell somebody that i'll only help you if you give me this then that means you don't even believe in the person in the first place you just want what the person can offer you so i always tell people like i always gonna get it cool it will come it, it's just you and how you you manage it and say okay no i don't want it this way because when you get to that point where you are doing something helping you then you get stuck because you don't move on in the first place. now the person takes control of your emotions and everything you know, you know how depressing it can be sometimes and imagine your boyfriend who's that's a lot of headache so that it's normal for every woman in the world when it comes to issues of maybe men to you should we say that it's normal and maybe we should not have to handle okay. i'm going to repeat it again men are hunters when they see something they like they'll go they'll go ahead with it they like everything so i mean it's it's up to you to know that this is not what I want for myself. This is not what I would like for myself. Because if somebody, if I come to you and I tell you, um, Dorian, I want to sleep with you, tell me no. I can't sleep with you. But if you tell me yes and I sleep with you, at the end of the day, if you tell me, this person has slept with somebody. This is actually true. 
do you get it? But if you didn't allow it, you go and get somewhere. You don't care because it's true. Yeah. So that's why I always say you and how you stand on your ground and be like no i'm a woman of my own i can get this without sleeping with somebody hmm.